I will talk pretty much about echocardiography and some key points in the pathophysiology of LVET um, physiology related to echocardiography. I like to start with a quote, living is not just staying alive. And LVET patients often can start living again their life again. And this is a young patient, and he said one time in an interview, um, this is probably the best looking zombie you will ever see. Rela um, referring to the fact that you won't find a pulse uh, on his body. For the record, I will not show a lot of references, but you can download most of the slides with all references and much more from this webpage. It's just my name, .be. It's for free. Now, continuous flow LVAT systems. The goal is in fact, or the physiology is in fact, the loading, keeping the loading balance between the right and the left ventricle during this kind of assist device support. And how can we do that? We use echo, of course. Um, we use echo to optimize, which is important, to optimize the left ventricular preload. And of course, we need to respect the right ventricle even more in these patients. And when we talk about the anatomy or the setup of an LVET uh, apparatus, we must not only consider the device itself. You must consider the system, the complete system, as a multi-layer system resembling an onion, with the LVET system itself in the middle, surrounded by the left ventricle, and the outer layer is in fact the right ventricle, which is the most important pump of the system. It's the flow limiting pump. You cannot exceed flow created by the right ventricle by pushing or trying to push more blood through the system. This is a common mistake. And in these LVET systems, there are three parts. You have the, the rotor, the impeller, and then there are two cannulas, the inflow cannula and the outflow cannula. And for the inflow cannula, you should aim for unrestricted, uncontaminated, I will explain later, laminar and low velocity flow towards the inflow cannula. This is important. And the inflow cannula is, in, is inserted, is implanted um, through the apex of the left ventricle, and it should be in the middle pointing towards the mitral valve. Of course, preoperatively, you should assess the, the left ventricle for the presence of thrombi, which is important. But also during the implantation procedure, you should, or the surgeon should avoid a too oblique uh, position of the inflow cannula, as this may lead to uh, suction of the walls and suction events. Now, flow towards this cannula has to be laminar. We don't want to see any regurgitation or turbulences of flow. Um, and very important, you should look for velocities. You can use pulsed wave Doppler in the inflow cannula and measure velocities. Two components. You need to see two components. You need to see a diastolic component and a systolic component. The systolic component, component the velocity should remain below two meters or 1.5 meters per second. If higher, this might indicate obstruction of this scanner. Of course, on the left, you will find the inflow pattern of the HeartMate 3, where you can see the uh, systolic and diastolic velocity, but also this. These are uh, intermittent changes in rotor speed. Every two seconds, the system is programmed to change rotor speed, to create some pulsatility, and to avoid uh, possible thrombus formation inside the system. On the right, you will have this artifact created by